So, uh, Jorge, my man, how are you? <laughs> Great fight. Thought it was phenomenal. Uh, Solomon thought it was a he thought it was a very close fight. How do you think that the uh, judges score? Did you think it was far off? Um, I I definitely know the judges were influenced by the crowd because a lot of those shots. When I ended in the corner, I was just getting my timing, throw three, four shots, it wouldn't land, and then I'd throw a good power shot. I'd see that I'd hurt him, I'd back him up, or he'd start goofing around, hurt him to the body numerous times, and uh, I think one or two of the judges only gave me two rounds, there's just no way, you know? I definitely were looking at the fight right now in the locker room, the more meaningful shots, and a lot more of the meaningful shots were landed by me, so I, I just feel that uh, it didn't go my way, but whatever, man, um, we're 1-1, one, one. we could run it back in somewhere like Vegas, make it a new triple H, and let's fucking throw down, you know? Last thing for me, um, Dean Tool said it, he posted it earlier, 15 months in the making. How crazy was it this 15 months run with you and Diaz, this rematch boxing? Uh, can you wrap it up shortly in 15 months and uh, finally happening tonight? A lot of ups and downs. The fight got moved numerous times. You know, the camp was long. Thank God there was like no serious injuries. You know, towards the end, I got it, uh, I had a couple injuries I had to battle through, but thank goodness I was able to make it here. I'll praise be to Jesus because I, I got this done win or lose. It was a great experience. I learned a lot about the trade of boxing, the craft of boxing. I learned a lot about myself as well. And um, I got a lot of miles left in the tank, so I don't know who's going to be the next opponent, but we're, we're going to be looking for somebody. Hey, all right. Carlo Cruza, Carlo Cruza, MMA. Here uh, what was it like running this one as a fighter and as well as a promoter? What was it like balancing both? A little tough, tougher than um, and just in the UFC where we just get handed uh, one role, which is just fight, get in shape, so this was a little different. But fun, man, I'm a businessman and I loved it. This is, uh, I wouldn't do it any other way, you know, this was amazing, you know. We're, we're determining how many pay-per-views we get to sell, all that shit, so I definitely love it, you know, it's more hands-on. Now, last question for me, going forward, uh, what's in the works maybe for your bare knuckle promotion? We expect some big shows coming up? Yeah, we definitely got a show, we're gonna announce it pretty soon. Um, we're gonna throw one down towards the mid to the end of September. We've got some bangers, a title fight on the card, so it's gonna be a great one. All right, so this is now one and one, but you have so many different options, right? You have mixed martial arts, you have boxing, possibly something else. Do you know how you would want to do the rubber match with Nate Diaz? Where would you like to have it? Uh, definitely boxing. I guess call me a sore loser. I don't want to do boxing. And if he wants to do MMA after that, we could do it. But uh, definitely want to do boxing over everything. You know, do it again. You said you had a chance to kind of overlook the fight a little bit in the back. Was there anything that you saw in the footage that you kind of wasn't aware of during the fight? Because you said the, the crowd affected a lot of the, possibly the judges. Is there anything you saw in the fight or in the footage? Shit, I mean, from what I saw, I definitely heard him more than he ever hurt me. I got, I got way cleaner shots, especially to the body. He never even did anything to my body. You know, I definitely hurt his body. And a couple of times that I heard him, he backed up. He never, he put a lot of pressure. He was coming forward, but he wasn't, he never hurt me. I don't think he landed any meaningful punches, you know, but eight rounds to two is like fucking nuts, but whatever, it's California, you know. I knew I had to get a knockout or, you know, some shit like this. George Josh Cross with Orange County Register. Five years ago in this building, Nate called you out. Uh, this felt like it could have been a full circle moment for you guys. Talk about seizing the moment in combat sports and how important that is for a fighter's career. And do you feel like you really did that with this promotion in this moment? Definitely. I, I know no matter what, we put on a great fight. I mean, the, the shit people saying online, everybody's loving it. So I know it was a great fight, win or lose, you know. And that's what another, obviously the win first over everything, but then uh, entertaining the crowd is another big part of it. So I'm glad we got to entertain everybody and we we'll probably sell another arena where the fuck it's at. I, uh, after a, a long build-up to this fight and this this uh, beef that's gone on for quite some time now, and a lot of the promotional obligations. Are you relieved that it's that it's over now? Yeah, in a sense, yeah, because I love to compete, you know. And now I just got to look for the next one. I'm a dog. I'm a field dog. I don't like being in no cage and no kettle. So I'm just gonna get right back to work, find the next opponent, get my ass in shape, and let's go. So I know you you know some things could be in the works, but what direction do you want to go? I mean. Right now, shit, I, I couldn't tell you, you know, I'm gonna sit down with my coaches, sit down with uh, Solomon from Fan Meal and figure it out, you know, see Nate wants to run it back or wherever the fuck it is, I'm gonna just get in shape and try to take the head off. And, and how many fights do you have left contractually with the UFC? With the UFC, I got a, a couple more. With Fan Meal, I got two. So I'm definitely gonna do those two boxing matches.
two more questions. Jorge, when you retired from MMA, you said you weren't seeing him like you felt comfortable, yeah. but you went through a whole training camp and now a whole fight. How did you feel out there? Do you still have that? I, no, I felt that great. Doubt? I felt great. You know, it's just it's just boxing now, so you're not worried about takedowns, kicks, elbows, and knees. So it's a little easier to just to see the hands coming. I'm not trying to take anything away from boxing. MMA is a little different. You got more weapons coming at you. But um, as far as tonight goes, I felt I was all right. I was uh, I wasn't overwhelmed or nothing. It was a good it was a good night. Is there another name if Nate's not available to you that you'd like to box against? Shit, right now we just hit the drawing board. See who comes up, and take his ass out. All right, last question right here. Okay. Just one for me. Um, I was watching the lead up to this fight, the videos that were released, and you said um, when you stopped training, you were kind of at the lowest point, you know, mentally, um, going through some things in life, and you went for that two hour run. You said you felt right at home. I know a lot of us in here are talking to uh, Jorge Mas with all the fighter. We look at you as a fighter, but mental health is a big thing in, in combat sports, and we kind of got to look out for our fighters. So I just want to know as a man, how are you doing, brother? Definitely not where I wanted to, uh, to be tonight. I wanted to get my hand raised by a knockout. I wouldn't have been happy if I would have got a decision. But um, as far as like mental peace and all that, I got a great team behind me. My, my family's behind me. I got great friends. My kids fucking love me no matter what I do. So it's just uh, stay healthy, stay training, and, and see what comes out of it. You know, I don't think um, I lost too much stock tonight, though I lost the fight. People saw that I come here to fight. I'm not here to pity pat or or fucking eat salads and post it on Instagram. I just come to fight, that's all I do, you know? So just get right back on the workhorse and get to it. Might as well. Yes, sir. Hey, what's up, stud? What's up, man? I, I have a question. Um, I noticed something from you implementing from the UFC and coming into boxing now, I've seen that you've been more ambidextrous and moving more in southpaw and switching it up to orthodox and normal yes, stance. How does it feel kind of like converting into it now from boxing into uh, UFC now that you've done both? You know, it's uh, it was a process when I first got to the gym. Hats off to Capetillo. Um, he took me from from uh, from the jump rope all the way to, to everything that I did tonight in the ring. He took away a lot of the shit that I didn't need in boxing and the things that were working out that he saw, you know, this could work in a boxing ring. Let's polish him up and keep him moving. You know, so um, I'm still, it's it's a beautiful sport. I've always said it at a martial, all the arts and martial arts is the one that comes most natural to me, boxing. So I definitely feel that I got some advantages over a lot of motherfuckers. So I just got to keep training and keep working because I haven't mastered this craft nowhere near. So I just got to keep getting better, see where I'm at, you know? You looked amazing tonight. I got to say you, bro. that. That's the champ right there, bro. And I think the, the scorecards were a little bit too wide. Uh, yeah, very yeah. close. I agree with Solomon. Um, just keep it up, man. You're doing great. Two more fights in boxing. I can't wait to see more. Yes, sir. God bless, bro. Thank you, everybody. God bless.